Princess Urduha King Delisai ruled over Pangasinan. He had a son who was a weakling and did not want to lead his father's army to battle. In those times, there was much trouble over the land. The king was growing old and his enemies surrounded his kingdom. My son, how will you rule when I am gone? King Delisai asked the prince. Our enemies are powerful and I will get everything from you and your sister unless you learn to fight. The prince remained silent. His sister, Princess Urduha, looked at him scornfully. He was weak and she was strong. He was cowardly and she was brave. He did not want to lead men to battle and she dreamed of fighting and winning great victories. As they were speaking, news came that a new enemy was coming to attack the kingdom. Princess Urduha threw herself at their father's feet. My father, she cried in a loud, ringing voice. Allow me to lead the army to battle. I promise you that we shall win a great victory. King Delisa hesitated, looking at his son. The young man was thin, weak and unhealthy looking. All right, the king told the princess. You shall be my son and lead my men to battle. Princess Urduha won a great victory over the enemy. From that time on, she began training her own army. It was composed of noble women, slave girls, and captive slaves. When King Delisai was dying, he told his people that the kingdom would be ruled by Princess Urduha because she had by her courage and daring, proven herself worthy to be a ruler. Princess Urduha waged many successful wars against neighboring kings. She was able to extend her kingdom to almost all of northern Luzon as far north as Hapari in Cagayan. The Amazon queen's bravery was known throughout this part of Asia. Princess Urduha had a special council composed of wise old women. They advised her to get married so that she might have a son to succeed her on the throne. I shall accept no man unless he bids me in a fair fight, the princess told them. The kings and princes of nearby kingdoms were afraid to court her. Her fame as a warrior and conqueror was great. They were ashamed to be defeated by a woman in combat. So Princess Urduha never married. Because of her many conquests, she became very wealthy. She dressed in expensive clothes. She wore gold ornaments on her arms and neck. She ate from dishes made of pure gold. She drank costly Chinese wines from golden cups. She was also a very intelligent woman. She could speak and write many languages and she tried to instruct and educate her people. She was also famous for her hospitality. She welcomed foreigners who came to her court because she wanted to hear of other lands and other kingdoms. Her palace was famous for its splendor. In Batutu, a famed Arab traveler of the 14th century, visited her kingdom. In his memoirs, he writes of her audience hall as a room of royal magnificence. Finished in sandalwood, which was then, as now, reserved for the wealthy, 
The hall was lined with cupboards and tables of carved woods, heavy with the weight of goblets and beakers of gold. Orduha's throne, the principal furnishing of the hall, was also of richly curved sandalwood, adorned with heavy plaques of solid gold, and hung with embroidered silken curtains from Cathay. Her counselor sat on carved stools of sandalwood immediately beneath the throne. In Batutu relates that on his arrival in Urduha's realm, he refused to break bread with the infidels since they ate food not allowed by the Quran. Hearing of this, Urduha sent her bodyguard to bring a Batutu to her. Batutu paid her his respects, and Batutu was surprised when she greeted him in his own tongue, Arabic. Bidding him to be seated, she called for writing materials and wrote the words. In the name of God, the Merciful and Compassionate. When Batutu saw the ritualistic invocation of his pate in the characters of his tongue, written by a princess whom he thought was a barbarian, his delight was great. The Muhammadan traveler conversed with Urduha in Arabic and told her of his travels. Learning that he had passed through India, she questioned him about the spice country. Her knowledge of foreign lands must have been somewhat limited, though her bravery was without end, for when he described the riches of Hindustan, she bowed to conquer that empire. It does not seem strange, according to Otley Bayer, an authority on Philippine anthropology, to find a princess so intelligent and powerful. Early travelers to the islands were greatly impressed with the Malay women, so different from harem imprisoned weaklings of their own lands. They were dominant in all walks of the comparatively simple life of the age. And in the three centuries before the coming of the Europeans, some of them rose to positions of great influence and power. And greatest of these women, in Batutu tells us, was Princess Urduha. <laughs>